Okay, on the right side there's the LRP uh, 380 micro modified motor with a steel pinion gear, uh, 12 tooth, 32 pitch, RC four wheel drive brand. Um, it's got double set screws. Other side there, there's the other um, set screw. The problem though with that pinion is it comes with one. Uh, it's like a black uh, set screw. It's too long. It only has one, and you need two. So what I did was I I ordered uh, more set screws. Uh, the size of them they're M3 times 0.5 times 3 millimeter, and they're stainless steel. I recommend getting them from a fastener supply store. They're cheaper, a lot cheaper actually. Um, the original pinion gear, here it's a soft brass, the bore shaft is approximately 2.3 millimeter, and it's also the same size as what's on the new motor, the LRP motor. However, pinion gears, you cannot hardly get them, uh, 32 pitch gears in that uh, size. So the only thing I was able to get was this RC four-wheel drive brand, a long 12-tooth pinion gear. So what I did was I ordered uh, an adapter bushing. The brand on this is uh, NWSL model part number 10162-9. It's it's basically a 1 8 to 3 30 seconds uh, adapter bushing. And what that allows you to do is what I've done is I've just kind of set by hand. I put the bushing at the end of this pinion shaft. Um, I'll take it out and show everybody. It's just a Let's just show you. It's just a bushing. It's very close fit to the 2.3 uh, millimeter shaft of the motor. Right now I'm working on my second motor. I've already done the first. What I did with the first one, now here's, these bushings are not very long. But actually it worked out good that it wasn't. What I did was I took some crazy glue and I put it towards the bottom of the shaft but I was very careful. I didn't want to get any on my end bearing here. So, because this is a 2.4 inside diameter, shaft is 2.3, it, it fits very loose but when you put the, when you put glue on it, I'm sure you could use something else besides crazy glue uh, if you wanted to. You just need something that's going to kind of keep it in place. Uh, plus, what you want is so it takes a very slight gap away. So I'm going to put it on here. I'm going to give it a demonstration. It's very hard to see because these parts are so shiny. It's just going to fit on the end of the shaft maybe like an eighth inch from the top of the bearing maybe less just where you got a, a space above the bearing basically you want to do is glue it on there and then what you'll do is you'll take the pinion and put it on there on top of the bushing and what you got to remember is you want the original pinion position because you're putting it in your uh, Nico Dictator or Radio Shack Black Phantom, um, Nico Megatron, whatever you have, it, they're all the same thing. Um, you want to make sure your pinion's the right, the end is the right length. Um, measuring from from the rear of the motor case to the to the front of the pinion 
the lengths between my fingers here, thumb, finger and thumb. Um, that is an approximate 66.9 to 70 millimeters. Um, there's this original Mabushi motor has a lot of in play, moves back and moves up and down a lot. My motor, of course, has a little bit less in play, but I would say 67 millimeters is pretty safe. Uh, if you get 66.9 using a micrometer, you're you're going to be fine. Um, but this is a good pinion gear. It's a double set screw. What you do is you just glue that bushing on there. Try to get it very center. Like use your fingers. Try to get it right in the middle. Once once that bushing is glued on there, you set that pinion on there. What you want to do is just simply take your uh, micrometer. Um, and remember, I'm showing you this. Uh, I haven't taken my motor. I haven't taken this this apart to uh, remember to put your motor inside of your uh, case first because you won't be able to get it back out once you put the pinion on. So. I'm showing it to you without the case on, but what you want to do is, like I was saying, just take your micrometer, put it inside the plastic case, and measure from the end to the top of this pinion, approximately 67 millimeters, um, and take your uh, your Allen uh, hex key. It, it'd be better if you have two of them one on each side and use your fingers and just barely just barely hand turn it until you like a little bit at a time on each uh, screw so you can get it centered all the while making sure you get the right height of, pin, of your pinion gear uh, don't cinch it down yet all you want to do is uh, get the pinion on there straight so there's no wobble or anything like that. You don't want to do a final tightening at all once you achieve the right height. And once once you tighten down the both set screws each side a little bit at a time, and you take your finger, once you have the right height, be careful not to push it too much to move it around because of course you don't want very much pressure on those uh, set screws yet because that shaft bushing it's steel but it's very thin you don't want to tighten it down yet what you do is you'll turn it you'll turn the thing and then you'll, you'll eyeball it to see if there's any type of wobble like this one's already done I can turn it and I can see that there's any a wobble in it. there's no wobble in this once you're satisfied that you've got the right pinion height and there's no wobble in there at all, um, and you've got your set screws sort of finger tight, but just to where it sort of pinches the bushing inside. Then what you'll do is uh, you'll take JB Weld. Well, I'll show you some JB Weld, basically steel epoxy hardener hardener and steel compound that you mix together. This is, I recommend this brand. You won't need very much. You'll just take, uh, you could take a cotton swab like this. Uh, take the end of the cotton off or something, then mix it up. Um, you could use something like a, a wooden skewer or a toothpick to mix it up or this smaller the better the more accurate you're going to get. get have some extra cotton buds on hand and what you'll do is um, I'll give you the, uh, the one I already finished um, assuming that you have this uh, initially set up and straight and remember your set screws should not be completely tightened down just enough to where everything's straight and you have the right height on your gear. What you want to do is mix up mix up your uh, JB weld. 
and your toothpick, take little globs of it, put it right in the center. And once she gets some towards the top, let it sit. And uh, depending on how you mix your JB Weld, if it's thinner or thicker, the point is when it starts to dry, it'll sink some. That means it's sinking down inside. And then you'll want to take some more later on after it sinks and put some more towards the top. Basically, you're gonna you're gonna JB Weld the end of your shaft into place, and once that's hardened, the top will not move around when you uh, do your set screws at the bottom. Um, and it's not really going to run, uh, it's not going to run to the bottom and get your uh, bearings or anything. You might see a tiny, tiny bit at the very end. It's going to be, it's not going to be uh, any anything to worry about. Unless you mixed it really, really thin, but if you do the, the instructions right, like 50-50 max, it's not going to be too thin. It's just going to, it'll, it'll, it's a paste. It'll, it'll harden up without getting down into your bearings because you're not putting very much. Just putting a little bit in the center. Use some extra Q-tips. Like if you accidentally get some on your gears, just take the Q, uh, cotton swab Q-tip and uh, make sure you get it all off because you don't want any uh, JB weld to harden on your gears. Once you got it all cleaned up to satisfaction, um, let it dry it at least 24 hours. And then the final step would be, once that's hardened up, you're going to you're going to turn it, check it again. Obviously, it's going to be the same unless you bumped it or you tighten it, tighten it too tight or something. But um, but. That's the step you want to do right the first time. You want to make sure that you just finger tight that Allen wrench on both sides. Um, once it's finished, the JB Weld's finished, then you can take your, uh, your Allen wrench, the hex wrench, and tighten those two set of screws fairly tight to your satisfaction. And then uh, you're basically done. That's how I did this one. Um, yeah, but I'll put in the description of where I ordered these adapter bushings. They're kind of hard to find. But this one turned out extremely well. So, so now um, I just have to do the second one. But it's... it's uh, like I said, the, the most tricky thing about it is putting the adapter bushing and gluing it on there, putting it at the right height. Be careful not to use too much glue. Like You don't want to get it on the outside of your adapter bushing or down in your motor or anything like that. But And I emphasize because I messed up one, uh, one time. You don't I messed up an adapter bushing. You don't want to tighten uh, these down, your, your set screws, at all until your JB weld at the top is dry. That's when you tighten it down. That's when you'll get the true tightening of your shaft to your pinion. So, and that's really, in my opinion, uh, it's going to be the trick trickiest part of uh, this restoration project is the motors. So I'm going to start on this uh, second one. I'm going to take a pair of small vice grips, locking pliers. I'm going to bend the shaft back and forth and snap this end off, unscrew the motor mount bolts and nuts and screws, uh, machine screws, and uh, take it out of the motor um, motor mount. So, but that's uh, that's basically how I did it. Um, the, 
like I was saying, the trickiest part is just getting your pin in on there and straight. You have to do a bushing glued and to get it straight. But the trick is you just you just tighten set screws one at a time on each side. And then I'll snug up against that bushing. And then uh, that 0.1 millimeter will just disappear as far as the looseness of it once you start tightening your set screws. And also the glue on the shaft helps to, to get rid of it. It fills, it fills the gap. Alright, um, thank you for watching.